Hi guys, how's everyone doing? Uh, hope you're well. Back again, Lost Beanbag Part 2 Road Review. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you check out the review on the board. I reviewed this last week. This uh, the board is 60, 23 inches wide, 2 and 3 quarters is the thickness, uh, although it's very thick, 2 and 3 quarters, and it's running just over 45 litres. I'm about 84 kgs and a pretty average surfer, so I, I usually ride things a bit bigger than I should do. Most of my boards you'll find are probably for a more like closer to a 90 to a maybe even 100 kg guy. So uh, yeah, size, size them appropriate to you if you're a good surfer. Uh, so yeah, on that I would probably say in this, like I got this for a pure, pure gravel board. So bear in mind that I've got this for riding when I don't want to be riding a mall. Uh, and the waves aren't really good enough for any sort of sort of short board or even hybrid. So this is uh, this is this is up on my this is up on even my volume. Uh, I would say you probably want to ride them two to even four liters more than what you'd ride your probably your performance board. Uh, and even on your hybrid or your groveler, maybe I don't you know if you've got like a got a puddle jumper or something you're probably still gonna be okay to add one or two liters onto it uh, and if you're a good surfer ride it pretty short uh, if you can generate your own speed but if you're in a if you're an older guy or you're in a weaker wave or a sloppy wave or a crumbly wave don't be scared to go fairly big because uh, you know like I say this for me is doing the job of it's when I don't want to ride a it's when I don't want to ride a mal and the waves here really are that slow that you can't even get your grovelers going till it's sort of this this kind of height. Uh, I would say the wave range for this board is sort of knee high to shoulder high if you're in a reasonable wave and if you've got a really crumbly slow wave like we have you could probably just about get away with head high. I've been riding this board this week uh, so the first surf was kind of peaky the tide was yeah the tide was a little bit high so some of the sets were just bouncing a little bit but they were sort of folding over quite fast and running down the line quite fast which is quite good and they were maxing out about yeah about shoulder about chest to shoulder high pretty much and yeah i found this board really good uh found it's got lots of its own speed you sort of feel like you're floating on a on a little cloud a little bit so you you put in your bottom turn on your backhand and you you don't feel like you've got like lots of grippy fit in the water because the, the board's doing so much of the of the forward projecting if that makes sense uh, but once you get up into the lip where you get into a close out section you can basically just do a little bit of weight on your heels and pull it back down and honestly it just it turns so quickly back down in the pocket you like I, I don't know if I was or not but basically you feel like you've you feel like you've blown the fins out and just swooped it straight down in the pocket and then it, it comes down really quickly as well it's got a lot of momentum out of uh, out of your finished turn uh, so that was the first ride a uh, lot easy to catch waves uh, yeah it's it's quite good like they don't have a lot of these chubby boards you think they're like massively massively paddle well but uh, what they don't always have is they don't have a masses of open water paddle speed a lot of the time because they're still in a short wide package but what they do have is a lot of pick up from the wave so when you when you get the wave getting behind this big tail uh, you'll get the wave will pick you up really easily which again if you're in a powerful wave is it gets too much so that's why but this is this is designed for the lowest of the low end and I think it's a really really good board for that because it's not uh, it's not like you say you know you see the reviews and people are riding the hybrids and they're saying they can ride them in like head or overhead or whatever this isn't made for that it'll top out of that and that mean that all means that it's better at the, at the lower end so that's what it's designed for <coughs> I measured this up as you can see the rocker is like pretty super flat uh, I measured this up and it is running 18 in the tail and pretty much the same in the nose uh, you can see it just does just fin off a little bit here uh, you know, I've just run it as I said I've just had a pure quad set up uh, I'll show you the show you the fins that I've gone through in a, in a, in a wee minute uh, so yeah that was my first surf the second surf I got out later on in this week and, and it, it looked a bit big for it to be fair but I took the board out anyway and I took some slightly bigger fins in and uh, it was a little bit big for it but it was a uh, a frames a little bit onshore quite sort of peaky takeoffs but then it kind of peter out after and the waves were 
Well, uh, yeah, probably maxing out about like just head high, maybe a little bit overhead. And um, yeah, it still held its own, but the, the, these sorts of boards, like they were really sucked down heavily into the water. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're if you're trying to push them into waves that are quite quite grunty, they they don't have the ability to really get a rail in or or get themselves. You know, there's not there's not a big long rail line, and the <coughs> the V in the design of the board has really made it to, made, made to let it settle into the water quite nicely. So they. They sort of feel like they're a bit sucked onto the water, onto the face of the wave, if that makes any sense. So yeah, that was the second day, but it held its own. I got I got one really nice left, and uh, I was coming off the bottom and off the top and off the bottom and off the top and off the bottom and off the top, and I did a uh, I did about four or five uh, yeah back and bottom turn to re entries, and uh, yeah, it, it 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 ground its way along the wave really nicely. It just felt a little bit awkward. I'm I'm still uh, I'm still struggling just a little bit just to get my foot where it should be when I'm riding. So. That'll, that'll come into its own a bit more when I get used to the board a little bit more. And then uh, literally just back today from a really, really good session where it was like quite quiet, not too many people around. Um, the waves were like just A-frames that were probably maxing out at about, yeah, maybe shoulder high on the, on the bigger ones, but most of it was sort of waist to chest uh, to shoulder at the most. Good A-frames, some good little peaky bits, good little walls on them. And uh, yeah, this thing felt amazing. This is that's where it really came into its own. It was like it was borderline. I could see it was. I could see I didn't really necessarily need a long board, but you were probably going to get a lot more ways on a long board. But uh, yeah, stuck it out on this, and uh, <coughs> honestly, I was paddling into waves at the same spot where the mouths were. And what was really cool is uh, a lot of the waves that were just getting a little bit too peaky for some of the mouths. They were leaving them, and and you just straight on them. You like. You sat virtually next to them and you just pop underneath them and there, uh, yeah, you got a few nice, uh, few nice bottom turns, few calves. Uh, there's a couple of times when I just weighted myself on the, on the front of the board and just let the board do its thing and it's got quite good Clyde. Uh, yeah, so yeah, really good, really enjoyable. So, as of as you see from the review, uh, this is uh, done by Lost New Zealand, which is Tommy Dalton and the guys there, and obviously they're, they're they've got a guy doing the art and he's absolutely brilliant i'm absolutely stoked with this so yeah if you want anything like this those guys are amazing and they're really good to deal with so you see this is a this is a resin tint double colors and he's managed to get this you know almost like a jaffa orange peel coming out of the blue which is like i'm really stoked with that uh so it's a big chunky board uh it's quite a decent size nose so it's you know it's a bit different to paddle around than some of the other boards and you're not going to get the edge of the nose into some of the troughs quite as hard as you might try to but that's not what this is this board's about this board's about <coughs> summer slop competing with mouths having fun and it is a shed load of fun so you can still do wrap rounds and cutbacks in the pocket and everything so yeah it's a really cracking board say flat rocker it picks up speed quite quickly when you take off and stand on it i mean basically just from paddling you you start paddling and you're like oh you're not really sure how quickly you're paddling into the wave but the minute the wave gets under the tail and under the board it's just like you, you're away and that's it you you pop up and you and you're off off and going so yeah have a look at the board review if you want to know a bit more about the board and i'm just going to show you through some of the fins i've been riding uh probably riding pretty big so uh yeah, I'll come. I'll come around and show you. But this is this is probably overkill for a lot of people. So just bear in mind your height and weight. If you're uh, if you're anything under like 85, 90 kgs, the, all this all the fins I'm going to show you will be way too much. But I'll give you some suggestions. <laughs> okay, so first go, we just started with fin that I know works very well and what was recommended. That was the the split keel. So this is the FCS two. It's basically a lost split keel. Uh, they do one in the Lost logos and one that's not in the Lost logos. Uh, so as you can see, the principle of this is like it's basically a keel fin split into two. Uh, you get a nice drivey raked fin on the front and you get a nice upright pivot fin on the back. So it actually puts quite a lot of the surface area of the fin in the back end of the board, which is good for these kind of boards because if you get anything like this or a sweet potato, I find a lot of the trouble is getting enough fin area back because the tail's so wide, so far back, you need to control it. Okay, so these are really good. I can actually release those fine. Uh, I felt like the board could possibly use a little bit more drive. 
So when I went, and, and this fin is basically a reactor rear fin, it's exactly the same as a reactor rear fin. So there's a, I'll show you here, like there's, there's the rear split keel pushed over a reactor. So you can see it's basically exactly the same fin. Okay, so what I did then is I thought I could possibly use a little bit more fin. So I've left the, I've left the trailer in and I went all the way up to, which is probably absolutely insane. I went all the way up to the power twin. So the power twin is slightly bigger than an MR. So I went all the way up to the power twin with this same fin in the back and uh, yeah, it was a little bit hard to turn to fair, to be fair, that was the, that was the bigger day and that's probably why I wasn't really getting a, a nice railing and wouldn't, wouldn't have helped with the board feeling like it's a bit too locked in. And then uh, today I rode the split keels again, which felt really nice. So the split, split keels are really good. But then I took the MR twin fin front in with the reactor stroke split keel rear and that actually felt really good i was getting more drive and it just meant there's a bit more fin forward and a bit more upright so you're getting more fin area but uh for probably for probably the same amount of maneuverability if that makes sense because you've got a more upright front fin so yeah that was quite interesting so if you're uh if you're a guy that's sitting down at uh if you guys sitting down in the 70 kilogram mark or smaller, that makes this quite interesting because you could do a similar kind of setup with, you might run like a performer extra large in the front or a performer large in the front. So basically if you're normally riding like a, a medium fin or a smaller medium fin, you go up to a pretty big large fin and then you can put probably your uh, normal-ish, but maybe or maybe even just stick to this size in the back for your... Uh, for your rear fin uh so yeah just you could play around basically but you know don't be don't be scared to be putting a you know for me at 85 kgs i can control it with basically some twin fins in the front and and the normal size quad rears so you know a, a, a 70 kg guy probably riding like maybe an extra large performer in the front and a medium performer in the back or even a large performer in the front and a medium or even a small performer, you know, just play around and make it suit your height and weight and see what you can see what you can get hold of and see what you can demo. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's about it. And say so if, you, if you're a smaller guy, just remember like you're probably gonna be riding these down in, I don't know, if you're a 70 kg guy and you're a good surfer, I would bet you probably ride in a, like a 5.6 or something, uh, possibly even a 5.4 if you're like under 70 kgs and, uh, and quite a good surfer, so. But if you're a bigger guy and you're looking for it for a really grovelly, crappy wave, you know, don't be scared to chuck a bit of volume on it. But just remember, it's going to get a bit more cumbersome for you. So, yeah, that's about it. Cheers, guys. Catch you soon.